Time for another travel day. We're off to Macedonia. Alrighty, fellow travel dons, welcome back. And we are on our way to Skopje, Macedonia. We are currently at Sofia bus station. This is the central bus station. Don't go to the train station. Go to the central bus station. Uh, I got my ticket online. It was about $26, $27. Uh, even if you get your ticket online, you do have to uh, report to the desk here. Uh, I got from through Kalea, so it's desk 10. And then you kind of just go from there. So we're off in just a short while. Off to Macedonia. So recommendation, if you're taking the uh, Calais bus to Macedonia, I think there's only two times that they do it, at least during the winter time. That is, uh, I believe it's like seven o'clock in the morning is when we left, or they also have like a 5.30 p.m. Uh, bus. And it's about a four and a half, almost five hour ride. So I highly recommend, it's one of those smaller buses, so it doesn't have a bathroom in it. So they will make stops. So we're about half an hour from the Macedonian border. We're about an hour and a half into the uh, bus ride, but definitely recommend go to the bathroom before and then they'll make stops at places like this uh, where you can also stop and get some snacks and whatnot. But yeah, it's, it's, you're probably gonna have about an hour and a half to two hours in between each bathroom break before you hit Skopje. So <laughs> it's not a big bus. But anyway, back on the road, but I will say, this mountainous area on the uh, west side of Bulgaria, absolutely beautiful. All right, so we just crossed over into Northern Macedonia. So got another one for the book and uh, we'll be on our way. We still got another about, I think two, two and a half hours left of the ride to Skopje. But this whole like mountain view area, I recommend taking the morning bus instead of later. Just because that way you can see it, particularly during the winter time. You know, by 5.30 the sun's already down. But yeah, it's not too hard of a process. Um, when you leave Bulgaria, they you have two different sections where they uh, check your bags and then they check your passport, stamp it, and then they just stamp it and check your passport and ask where you're going when you get to Macedonia. So, very simple. It's probably about a 20 minute process entirely. Kept getting on and off the bus, like, I was like, just let me walk the whole thing and <laughs> we'll get back on at the end. So, it was kind of, it was a fun game. But anyway, onwards to Skopje. <music> So we've made it to Skopje here in North Macedonia. This is the capital of this country. And uh, I've got a couple more hours before my uh, my Airbnb is ready for me because we got in early. It's a little uh, right before 11 o'clock here. So we're gonna go downtown, get something to eat and kind of check things out and then uh, check in. That's fascinating behind me. Looks like a ship that was turned into a restaurant or maybe a hotel or something at some point. Now it's uh, now it's nothing. We'll look into that later. Found a second boat behind me. This one's actually in operation. So yeah, it looks like that first one no longer in operation. This one is. Maybe we'll check it out later. Uh, kind of looks like there's like a restaurant on inside, so kind of cool. But anyway, we'll continue on. Now let's find something to eat. All right, 
so we are here in the city center and I'm stopping at a place called Collective to get kind of more of just like a traditional breakfast. Not really Macedonian per se, uh, because it's basically an omelet, but number one, it's a big freaking omelet. And it does have local Macedonian white cheese in there. Uh, so we're gonna take a nice quick bite of that first, as you can see right there. It's good omelet. They even have this uh, this bread that I think is a uh, local bread. Kind of a big, big piece too. Pulls apart really nice. Mm. That's actually really nice. I like the little, just kind of like the uh, the seasoning they put on top. Very good. There you go. It's kind of a nice looking place inside. It's got some great artwork around. But it's right off the city center. It's right down the block from where I'm going to be staying at. Also, I got a surprise for you guys at the end of this video. Also, stay tuned for the end of this video because not only for the surprise, but there is something you specifically have to do when you're here in Macedonia, particularly in Skopje, when you're traveling here. But I'll get into that later on in the video. So, but anyway, yeah. You're here, you need a quick uh, omelet or something like that. Collective, good spot, and pretty decently priced. It's like 200 um, Macedonian dollars, which I think is like, it's like five, five, five bucks for this big omelet, plus the bread and the um, little, comes with like fries on the side. So, cheers. All right, guys, so I just checked into our Airbnb here in Skopje, and you guys are gonna love this. If you stay in Skopje, Mas North of Macedonia, I highly recommend this place, particularly if you are traveling with more than one person, which means I'm kind of giving away a little bit of the secret for later tonight. The secret is, of course, someone will be joining me at the end of this video for the next, I think about three or four videos, but, Anyway, yeah, um, this place is called The Music Box on Airbnb. I'll leave a link in the description. And this place is awesome. It's basically in a 70s style version, uh, like kind of decor and artwork and everything. It's, just, it's so cool. So let me give you kind of like a tour. So welcome to the abode. So walking in, uh, so man, door, main hallway. We'll go down there in a second. So you have the bathroom here. You, of course, have a washer, everything's set up, and my first, and I've probably my only tub for my entire travels. I don't remember if any of my other places have one, but I don't think so. But anyway, yeah, I have a tub. And then two rooms. First room is here. Looks lovely. So this is Al, as I hit my, as I hit my shin, <laughs> it hurts, but anyway. Two double beds here for you. And then of course, a patio. Take us right out onto one of the, right off the main strip there. Looks lovely. And now, let's continue inside. So um, this was about, for three nights, about 220. So you think, what, about over between 70 and 80 bucks a night. And of course this is gonna be for two people. You could literally fit four. So it's a great deal. This is the secondary bedroom. New bedroom, again, like I said, 1970s everywhere. Except the TV, that's, that's not 1970s. Anyway, bed, ooh, a little comfier than the last place. Full on, nice closet set up there for you. Again, another balcony. And to cap it off, you have, of course, the living room and kitchen set up together. Very nice. Of course, you have right here, looks like a cupboard. That is a fridge and the freezer down here. All of your glassware and essentials there. Everything that you need. And of course, one more balcony into just basically a courtyard. So, but anyway, yeah, this is the Airbnb that I'll be staying at here with my uh, friend for the next three nights here in Skopje, Northern Macedonia. 
This place is awesome. I'm super excited. All right, guys, so I took a quick nap and now we're gonna go just walk around town, just kind of look things out. I'll do a further video on the next video, kind of diving more into Skopje in and of itself, places to eat, historical places. But for now, let's just take a walk around town. So I gotta say, Skopje is a rather fascinating case study. Just walking around, I haven't really delved into the history of it just yet, but just walking around and you've got different types of buildings. And of course, this whole area has a rich, long history from the beginnings of the uh, Pion, I think it's the Pionians from like the times of Troy and beyond before that. And then, you know, through the Macedonian kingdoms, uh, obviously the Romans, the Byzantines, the Bulgarians, uh, the Ottomans for five centuries. And then of course, uh, under Yugoslavia, under Serbia, under everything under the sun until 1991 when they became their own country. But it's like the architecture is fascinating. So like you have the fortress in the background, next video will really go, go into that. Um, but I mean, that dates from medieval periods. You have things like neoclassical buildings, like Baroque style buildings. You have uh, modern style, uh, like obviously modern buildings. So like you get a mixture of things that you see in some of the uh, bigger European capitals, as well as of course, uh, Turkish themes, uh, Byzantine and yeah, it's, it's, it's fascinating. It's just, it's kind of a patchwork of different styles of architecture all over the city and it kind of works for it it's like i think when i read up on initially read up on it it's like architecture wise Skopje is very much the concrete jungle or concrete playground because everything is all concrete <laughs> it's just it is it is a fascinating city but i kind of like it like honestly just walking down here along the river walk this is really this is really nice Hi there, friends. Oh, goodness. Just need a little pet and a little love. Yeah. All right, Macedonian cats are cool. You never know with the cats around here in the Balkans, but that one, that one's all right. I think only negative thing so far I would say about Skopje personally is the air quality. Like, at least during winter time. Uh, I mean, it looks nice in the back, but Honestly, it's very hazy and it's just the pollution is <laughs> not that good, at least air quality wise. And I think part of it is because during the during parts of the winter time, like right now, it's actually rather warm. It's only, I think, as the sun's starting to go down, it's still in like 51, 50 degrees. I think tonight, yeah, it gets about 34 Fahrenheit, but it's rather warm for the you know that for me it's the it's the it's the end of december as i'm shooting this and it's just it's like springtime so but you know they haven't had a whole lot of rain recently and i do know that there's still very much a wood burning society within the homes uh particularly on the outskirts um regulations when it comes to cars are maybe not as up to date as like the eu is so because technically macedonia is not yet a member of the european union as of filming this but yeah it's like i remember when we were coming in on the bus i was like that's a big brown cloud above <laughs> so it's affecting a little bit of the sinuses so thankfully it's not too bad and it won't be too bad because i don't have to deal with asthma but if you had asthma problems particularly coming in here during the winter time, I think things are a little bit more still uh, when you don't have as much rain and maybe right now there's no snow. 
Yeah, that's, uh, yeah. Uh, air quality can be a little bad. But outside of that, beautiful city. And while we're walking down by the river, contemplating life, I'd like to know, and you can leave this in the comments below, what is your favorite place to have traveled that you've been to so far? And what is on the top of your list for your, like, the number one bucket list place you want to go right now if you could do it? Let me know in the comments below. I'm always curious about that stuff. I mean, I've done a couple of travel Q and A's, so you can watch those videos, um, kind of deep dive into all of that. But I will tell you right now, my favorite place so far as a country as a whole and an experience would probably have to be still New Zealand. Uh, even so far with everything I've done on the Balkans trip, Greece, Bulgaria, and now of course being here in Skopje, uh, news, those three weeks in New Zealand before I started filming, um, which I should have done this years ago, but before I started filming, New Zealand was definitely, definitely my favorite place to go. And on the top of my list right now, if I had no monetary issues when it came to tra traveling, would be Japan. I was supposed to do it in 2020, right in April. And of course, we all know what happened then. But that is the top of my list but that is something that i'm waiting until i get into a much much better uh shall we say uh, financial situation because places like this the balkans this is partly why i'm doing this trip people ask us like during the winter time why are you doing the balkans greece uh particularly greece because you know greece um at least everybody when they think greece they think the greek islands well the greek islands are generally most mostly closed during the winter time but I want to do the Greece and the Balkans, number one, for the experience. Number two, because it is relatively inexpensive to travel to during the shoulder season specifically. Unless you're going to ski resorts, which I'm obviously not doing on this trip. You know, it allows me with a smaller budget to really delve into a place. If I were to have done Japan this winter, with what I was able to save up during the summertime, I would have only been able to do two, maybe three weeks. Uh, whereas in, for me, this is about a little over a two month trip for me here. So, but anyway, let me know in the comments below of your answers. What is the favorite place you've been to so far? And what is at the top of your list to go to from here on? stop for something to eat. This is a place called Skopje Mirak. I think I got that right. And it's in a neighborhood called Debar Maolo. And this Debar Maolo is sort of a, uh, like an authentic old neighborhood here in Skopje. Uh, a lot, just walking around here at night, it's like, it's a lot of like beer hall, tavernas. Well, tavernas is Greek, but uh, you know, uh, restaurants, taverns, pubs, things like that. And it's just kind of like, it's all kind of local. I don't hear any English whatsoever. Uh, I actually had to call another waiter to take my order because the initial waiter didn't speak any English. So, you know, it's rather authentic. And this was actually, um, this was uh, recommended to me by my Airbnb host. So uh, we're waiting for the food. I'm excited about it because it's like a pastry pot. I'm trying to remember the name. I'll get that for you guys. But it is a pastry pot that has like, minced beef and meat in it. I'm just, I'm super excited about this. All right, I don't even know where to start. Like, look at this. Just look at this. This thing is massive. This thing is huge. It's called, well, so um, in the uh, English menu, it's called pastry pot. I asked him the name and he said something along the lines of carne, uh, carne. There's a lot of garter and a lot of out right there. So, <laughs> I don't know if I'm getting that right. But it's just, I mean, you just look at the size of this thing. It is ridiculous. It's supposed to be, I think it's like pork filet, uh, mincemeat, uh, mushrooms. I think there's some form of cheese in there. Uh, and some kind of sauce. So, we're just kind of gonna dig in real quick to this. Get a little bit of, ooh, nice chunk of meat there with some of that sauce. Mm, you can smell the mushroom in there too. Oh ha ha, a ha. Oh my god. And that pork filet though, it's just very tender. Like that just started 
Yeah. That is super easy. Oh my god. Guys, this is delicious. Come and get a garden egg or just look up pastry pot and get it because it's just that is delicious. Ooh. Watch those bites because it is hot. But man, that is so good. And it's super tender. Yo. Excuse me while I dig in. All right, so I had a Macedonian couple sitting right next to me, and uh, they wanted to just make sure I got it right. It's called Gerne. So it phonetically, if you were to spell it out, because Macedonian, just like Greek and a lot of Eastern, um, you know, Eastern European cultures, their alphabet's different. Um, but if you were to spell it out, it would be G-R-N-E. And Gerne actually means pot. So, like, even if you see, like, a clay pot or something like that, that is apparently Gerne. I think I got that right. But this is a bread pot filled with, of course, delicious meats and sauce and all that good stuff. So, so good! Oh. Oh, yeah. So, by the way, this restaurant called Skopsky Merak is, uh, the owner is a friend of the guy that I am renting the Airbnb from that you saw earlier. Uh, the owner's name is Zvonko. I think I got that right. My apologies, Zvonko, if I, if I didn't pronounce that right. But they have a dessert that is basically in the English thing. It's called Grandmother's Cake. So, this is a cake recipe from his grandmother. I was told the main, uh, uh, like, ingredient inside is apple. So, we're going to give it a try. It looks it's amazing. It's got a nice flaky crust to it, but it's well put together. It's got like several layers in there. Oh my god. There's a lot to that. Like, definitely apple is your main component and flavor. But like there's a little bit of cream in there. You have nice powdered sugar on top of like the flaky crust uh, on top of the cake. It's very crumbly. That's just, that is absolutely fantastic. Well done. So we are now at the Skopje airport and we are here to pick up our surprise guest. Have you already figured out who it is? You probably already know if you've been watching the channel, but she'll be here momentarily. Oh, I've spotted her. Here she comes, the travel princess herself. Hello, darling. Hi. <laughs> All right, so as you can see, the special guest was of course, Sky. She is here. What do you think of the room, Sky? It's really cool. It's awesome. Okay, she's tired. She's gonna go to bed. But uh, anyway, so that is our journey to Macedonia. We, of course, uh, will be exploring Skopje on the next video, so stay tuned for that. Uh, I also promised to tell you guys that there was one important thing you wanted to know, so I'm glad that you guys stuck around for this. When you are here in Macedonia, usually it's taken care of by your hotel, however, or hostel. However, you're staying in an Airbnb, you have to contact and talk with your host about getting kind of like a receipt of stay. So you wanna get a receipt of stay that you need within about 24 hours of arrival. You have to go to the local police station, generally with your host, uh, wherever you're staying at, and they can kind of run you through all of that. You just have to show your passport, you just get the receipt, and then before you leave, within about 24 hours of your um, departure, you have to take this back and then just get it signed for the date that you are leaving. So, just how things go here in Macedonia. Um, they're obviously, of course, not uh, connected into the EU, so they have slightly different rules. So just, you know, respect that and make sure that you do do take care of that uh, just in case your host doesn't mention it. Because initially it hadn't been mentioned and then Sky sent me something and I was like, hey, are we gonna be doing this? And they're like, oh yeah, uh, we were gonna take you once both of you 
we're here. So I was like, okay, cool. So but anyway, just a little thought process for you. And uh, anyway, I'm also tired. So guys, if you like the video, give it a big old thumbs up. Of course, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And uh, I will see you guys on the next adventure here in Macedonia. So everybody say ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao. ciao, ciao. Peace out. Have a great night.